Hi everyone, uh, this is Amber at Prairie Quilt and I want to talk to you about one of my favorite machines that we have. This is the Foff Expression 710. So these are the new expressions that came out just a couple years ago, I think. Um, the new expression line and I love this one, plus it's purple so I'm a little biased. So we're going to talk a little bit about the machine. When they came out with the new expression line, they redid the lighting, so the throat space here has new lighting. Uh, and then a little brighter on this side. So it's much brighter than they used to be, or most machines that are out there. There is almost 10 inches um, on throat space from the needle all the way to the right here for sewing. I have used this machine for tons and tons of bindings and all kinds of stuff. So you can do pretty much anything here. You can always get an extension table and go all the way that way. You guys know this, or we can get a cabinet for you, all those things. And there are, if you look up here, the way they have this sequenced out, different categories of the stitches, we'll go into that. Um, 245 different stitches in this machine. So ones that you didn't know you needed. Okay, so that includes buttonhole stitches and of course the button, which we're gonna do a buttonhole stitch. So first we need to thread this guy. Of course we got purple thread here. I don't know if you can get on top of here. So we're gonna go through here and here we're gonna go put our tension disc and it doesn't matter which side. Pretty same way that you thread most machines. Very easy. We're gonna come down. There's a little hook on this side over here. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm gonna slide this back here and just pull it to the front and there it is. I will put my foot down so it's out of my way and I have more room for this. Uh, I'm going to drop my needle in. This is not required. It's not part of it. But then I know for sure that I am centered. And so I don't ruin that little hook inside of the threader. So I'm going to get my hand in your way here, Danny. <laughs> so this comes down. Let me go in here. And this pops up here. There's my loop in the back right here and I'm threaded, that easy. So it does come with the automatic threader like that. You still have cutter over here if you wanna cut that off. But we do have scissors in this machine. So for our bobbin, this just slides out. Bobbin case, it is a drop-in bobbin. Um, also, this plate can be switched to a straight stitch plate. We do not have that on right now. Uh, you just take your screwdriver and pop it up and it pops right out, it's super easy. Uh, and it comes with the screwdriver and everything that you need. When you get it, there's a straight stitch plate. You do get that with this machine, I believe, and a quarter inch foot. So, we take our bobbin, and we're gonna drop it right in, and we're just gonna hook this little metal piece right here, and then follow the arrows. So we go up here, down here and right there is the cutter and we're done. I don't need to pull the thread up, it's going to pull it up for me when we're ready to go and I love it. So you can also see right here, usually we have a feed dog drop in the back over here uh, to drop these down if you wanted to do any kind of free motion, but the feed dog drop is right in the front of the machine, super handy for you. When you're ready to do that so if I click it over it's gonna drop those feed dogs down it does not come up again until I start sewing when I push it back over just like most machines so I don't know if you're looking back here if you've seen uh, there is no lever for your foot because this has an automatic presser foot which is maybe my favorite thing <laughs> And um, this is when it starts having those. It still has the patent IDT for FOF. So that's good there. I have a different foot on there that you wouldn't use it for, but we're gonna trade it out. So again, the feet are universal. They just pop right off there. And I have my accessory tray in here. And the OA, this is the standard foot here. Okay which I don't really need right now because we are going to do a buttonhole stitch. Let me show you a couple things on here before we get going. We have our foot control up and down. So if you did want to still be able to put your foot up and down, instead of having that lever on the side, you're just going to push your buttons. 
right here. Um, you have your repeats. This is your speed here. So when you click this, you have a little speed that pops up here, but you can hold it and your speed control will show up on your screen. There is a built-in slot in the side of the machine that holds a stylus instead of on the front like they used to be and fall out. This one actually goes inside. So if you want to not use your fingers on this touch screen, you can use the stylus instead. Okay, and then I can make it go away. We have our tie off. This is our needle up and down, which we just used. We have scissors. We have love those. Our play and stop button. So it can be hands free, you don't have, or pedal free, I guess. Not hands free. You're gonna wanna keep your hands on it. Pedal free, so you can play and stop that without having to use your foot. And then this is um, touch activated too. So we're gonna talk about that. If there's any question on your screen at any time, this is my other favorite part, this question mark right here, you can touch this and it'll pop up and then you touch anything else on the screen. So if I wanna know what it is, all I have to do is touch it and it will tell me what it does. So that is the sequencing and helps you create sequencing and we're gonna do a little of that too. And then it closes and then it's not on anymore. So if I wanted to know what this was, question mark, touch it, and that's my stitch length. So instead of just going in blind and pushing buttons and trying to figure out what you're doing, you can always just go to that question mark, it'll tell you everything. I love that. And we have settings so that you can turn on your stitch width safety if you have your straight stitch plate on. That way you don't accidentally pick a stitch and try to sew with a straight stitch plate on and tread your needle. <laughs> That's never a fun thing. Uh, you have your 10 needles. You can turn your automatic pressure foot lift off if you don't want that on. Um, the thread snips for sewing, you can turn all those off. You have your machine information in here. You can have a lock screen, so if you have a lot of grandkids running around or people at your house, your screen will actually lock up until you hit a certain code to unlock it, so somebody can't come and just start pushing buttons and mess anything up that you might have saved in there. And then you can recalibrate your screen if you ever need to do that. And your machine information. So memory usage on this is only 6%, even with all those 245 stitches built in there and all your stuff here. There is a USB port in the side, so if your machine ever needs to be updated, uh, you can take that, to bring that to us, bring it to Jason, or we can update those if it ever has to happen. Super easy. All right, so right here on this screen, Danny, this one tells you what foot you need for the stitch that you have selected. This shows the stitch that's there. So this, we have the straight stitch and we need the OA foot. And then these right here, the bottom one is your feed dogs and the top is your IDT. So it's telling you right here that you should engage your IDT for this stitch. It's not going to yell at you if you do or don't do it, but it's a good indication of when you should or shouldn't use it. This is a button that you would pick if you wanted to do any free motion. And then you can select which foot you're using and it will help you determine your pressure. I have done that on these machines too. That is a lot of fun. So right here we have our stitch width um, and then we can move our needle over. When it turns green it is no longer in default so that you know that something has changed and it's on. And then when you move it back it will go white again in both directions it does that. It will also do it on your stitch width and if you're changing your um, pressure. Down here is the actual number of the stitch. So this is one, one, one. So we can go up here, this is one, one. This is gonna be the first stitch. And we'll go into that menu also. Here in the heart, these are saved stitches that you can put in. So if there's something you use a lot of and you want quick reference, you can go there. <laughs> We've accidentally saved in some straight stitches. But you can also do sequencing so you can save sequences that you really like if you put one together and use it again later. So that's fun. This one right here, you can see there's some green, which means something inside of here is on. So if I open this up, there's three options. I can tie off when I start, I can tie off when I end, I have both of those on, and I can hit scissors. So if I have all three, it's gonna tie off when I start, 
it'll tie off when we end the stitch and then it will cut it for me and I don't have to do anything. I'm gonna turn that back off for now and leave those on. So when I, if I did have them both off, they would not be green anymore. So you always know if you have something going because it will be green. This is tapering. So if you're doing kind of like a box around something, you can taper those corners to make them look really nice. This little triangle here, just like we had it on the speed, indicates there's something inside, something more. So if we hold it down, it will pop up another window and you can pick the different degree of taper that you like. I'm gonna turn this. Turn it off and you do the left or the right. So to close this back up I just touch it again and then we did this one which is our sequencing button. You have a trash can over here and then you have mirroring and flipping right here. Okay so the only one that we didn't talk about is these. I've heard it be called candy bars. I've heard it be called like Fig Newton bars. <laughs> it's the menu whatever you want to call it. These uh, double lines over here, double rows opens up your stitch menu. So you can see right here that we are in 1-1 one, one essential stitches, which is this right here. And then you have all of your stitches listed by number. Oops, wrong way. Let's go back. So in 1-1, one, one, these are all the stitches that are listed in here. And you can see that they are the same the ones right here. So. Stitch 10 is gonna be this one right here, and it goes all the way through. Now there's a couple different things you can do. You can go back to this and go to 1.2 and do your overcast stitches right here, um, and then go back in. So there's gonna be four sections, one, two, three, and four, and you can do that right here. Or you can touch these and then go to the specific stitch that you want, lug these. The other way you can do this, if you want to just look at everything as you're going, are the arrows. So when there's more on the page, it will cycle through all the stitches in the whole machine if you just keep going through them. It would take you a while because there's 245. So instead you can just find the stitch and then you have your saved stitches too. So we find the stitch up here that we want to use, plug it in here. It'll tell us all the information. On the right side over here, it's underlined green, so we are in stitching. Uh, this right here is going to be personal files that you have saved in there. And the A is going to be fonts. So we have three different fonts. The nine is the size on all of them, some cursive, um, the comic and the acrylic. The comic is pretty big. We'll probably try that one today so we can make labels and put your name on things, whatever you want to do. Initials, little monograms, lots of fun stuff. I'm going to close that out. Okay, so let's do a buttonhole stitch first. Everybody knows that a straight stitch is wonderful, but let's do a buttonhole stitch. So I go up here and I'm going to look at the options that I have for the buttonhole stitch. I'm in 1-3, so I go back to my settings. I'm in this still, it stayed there, so I switch it to stitches. And I'm gonna go to 1.3 where it says buttonholes. And then I'm going to pick one. So let's just pick the first one. Okay, and the buttonhole stitch shows up on my screen. Now, this right here means that you have your buttonhole stitch on. So this is gonna adjust your size. And you have a little measuring tool over here on your machine lid that you can measure your button that you actually have physically and make it the right size. Okay, does that make sense? All right, so I am actually gonna turn this back off. I like doing it a different way, so let's see. Now this machine doesn't have the little attachment foot like the passports do. This one actually has a sensormatic. So up underneath here, which you're not gonna be able to see because Danny's not gonna <laughs> tip it upside down, there's a place to plug in the sensormatic foot. It does come with that. And they're usually back here. So here it is. 
it's this weird looking contraption like this take this foot off make sure your um, IDT is up and it is all right so here's this fun little thing here this is the plug that's gonna go into that hole and when I feel for it it goes and dents a little bit there it is Oop. okay make sure it's all the way in there and then this foot is going to plug in Oh, hold on. There we go. It just clips right on just like, sorry, all the other feet. There it is. And it's ready to go. Now, this red dot right here, you want to make sure is lined up with that notch. That's where you're going to start because it's going to sew in the opposite direction that you're used to. It's going to come this way first and then go back that way. So I'm gonna use this one. I've already done a little pretty quilt on there. That's okay. So I would then, I'm gonna select my stitch again. So I go to my menu and it is a buttonhole and I like this one. Now my size is in millimeters right now. It's saying 16. So if I came over here and I looked, it's about that big. You're gonna wanna do a few millimeters longer than your actual button so that you have room to really put it inside there because I'm sure you guys have gotten that shorter pair of pants where that button doesn't slide in very easy and you're forcing it in your fingers hurt so you want to do a few millimeters a little bit bigger so I don't have an actual button so we'll pretend that it's 15 in millimeters so we'll keep it at 16 or 14 millimeters so I'm gonna put now you can always practice this on something to make sure you're putting it in the right spot but it's going to start stitching where it's at because we have the red it's very important that that red arrow is lined up there if i needed to change my length i would do it right here like that and it's showing me that it's going to go backwards first so i'm going to put my foot down and i'm not going to use my foot pedal i could if i wanted but instead i am just going to hit play and it's going to do all the work for me um, you can go and adjust the speed of it while you're while it's doing this if you wanted to. I think this is a nice speed for a buttonhole stitch. Now if I would have turned the scissors on before I started that, it would have also cut it for me before it lifted the foot up. So I can put this down here and just hit my scissors. It'll lift the foot back up for me. It pulls the threads to the back. So when I'm done, I have a clean buttonhole right here. Take your seam ripper or whatever, cut out your center, and that's it. So simple. Fun. Okay, so that's the buttonhole. Just pop your foot off, unplug it, it knows that it's turned off. Um, if you plug it in first, or if you put the stitch in and then you plug it in, I believe that it shows you in inches. And if you, and then I don't, I like using the millimeter, which is really weird. That's the only thing I like really on millimeter. But if you, put the uh, foot in first and then pick your buttonhole stitch like we did, then it's in uh, millimeters. So, and it's all in the manual. The manual is fantastic. So when you forget how to do that, because you know, unless you're making buttonholes a lot, you're not probably gonna use it super, super often, but it's a really cool option to be able to have. All right. So now it's gonna stay on that stitch until we pick something else. And I don't know if you guys noticed when you were looking on here, it's going to show you which foot, the 5A is the centermatic, and then this represents the fact that you, it's saying that you should probably use stabilizer. So that's a suggestion for you stabilizer, and it would depend on the material, and you would know if you needed to that. So if we switch our stitching, we just go back to our menu and pick whatever we want to and it will pop that up on the screen. So let's do 
a little monogram, but also some sequencing. So let's see if we go back to our home here in the front. Uh, well, let's put it on a straight stitch and start from the fresh. Okay. And if I go to my um, sequencing, it opens up a whole different window. It is a different color, so you know that you're not in the regular one. And here I can do all the things that I want to. So once I'm in the sequence creator and I go back in the menu, now I can pick things that I want. So I'm actually going to put a star in first. So I go up here and I find the star that I like that I can't remember where it's at now. Let's see, Danny, do you see it? Oh, right here, I like these. So six, three. So I'm gonna go back in here and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna scroll this way and I can pick this if I want to or I could have just moved it. So it's in six, three fun stitches. There's the star, so I'm gonna pick one of those and it automatically puts one in because again, we went into the sequencing first and I just want one star. Um, actually, let's do, I'm going to do a tie off first and then I'm going to put the star in. That way I don't have to worry about it. So there's my tie off, there's my star, and now I'm going to write out something fun. So I'm going to go back in here, I'm going to go to my letter, and I'm going to pick a font, and then it pops up a keyboard. So let's put in Prairie Quilt and I can do capitals and I can switch it to lowercase. Don't spell it wrong. <laughs> There's a space here and I can do go back. There's also numbers. If you go here, you can put in numbers and punctuation. It can make it look very nice. I'm going to go back to capitalizing my Q. I like that. And then I'm going to, I don't want another space, but I'm going to do another star. So I can go back and this screen was the last one I was in, so I don't have to go find it again. I'm going to put in another star. And I'm going to tie it off again. And then I'm going to put my scissors so it'll cut it for me and stop and not start stitching another one. So when I like what I have, I'm going to hit OK. Make sure this is what I like. Again, has it all, this is how it's going to stitch out going this direction. So you're going to make sure you have your fabric in the right place. And I'm going to hit OK here and it pops up. And here we go. Oh, we need a foot. So it says 2A. So we look in here. Here's our 2A foot, also known as a decorative foot. It is a flat back, so it's no IDT, plus our teeth are not on here. So we do not need the IDT for this foot. It is suggesting that we use stabilizer. I do have some. And so we put this down. Now I can drop my foot down or I can just hit play and it'll drop it and start it for me. So I can just hit play and here we go. I am going to slow it down just a little bit for you guys to see what's happening here. You do always kind of want to measure out, it will tell you the size in there. Uh, how long of a stitch out you've made so that you have enough fabric. You don't want to get to the end and not be able to stitch all of your things out. I'm hoping that doesn't happen right now because <laughs> I didn't pay attention. I think we're okay. I have done that before. Okay, so when it gets to the star, we programmed it to tie off and stop and cut the fabric for us. I think it's on the star right now. Oh, 
Oh, it's not going to be close. So close. There's the tie off, there's the cut and the lift. And it pulls the threads to the back. <laughs> and I was lucky for not measuring. And there is Prairie Quilt with little stars. So you could do anything you wanted. You could then go underneath it. You could put a date. So you can make your own labels. You can do whatever you want. I'm sure you guys have lots of ideas. I do want to stitch out um, one more thing for you. Look how beautiful it is. Because the detail of it I think is so awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into here and close this out. And... I don't want to be inside of my sequence creator anymore so I'm gonna hold this button down oh, let's see we're going to do I want to do this whale it's six two so I'm gonna switch it back to the six two and he is right here number seven and I'm just gonna do one of these am I in my sequence creator here Okay, so and it's telling me that I'm on 627, which is correct, and it's telling me to use the 2A foot, which is what we already have, and then I need stabilizer. I already have that on there as well, and it's telling me the size, and I still have my tie off at the front and the back, and I'm going to go ahead and put my scissors on, close that back up, and do a whale, and it is going to be so cute. You guys are going to love it. Again, so I can drop the foot down myself with the button like this and then I can hit start or I can just hit start from here. I can use the foot pedal. Uh, it's still plugged in. I don't have to unplug it to use the play button. I can use the foot pedal if I wanted to, if I wanted that control, but I just like, I like that the machine will do it for me. So here we go. Again, if you don't like it to go that fast, you could slow it down a little bit. And it might be doing more than one. I may not have specified how many I wanted to before it cut off. But the fun thing about this is what I can do in the middle of stitching, if I decide I want it to stop, while it's still going, I can hit the scissors. And what it's going to do is finish the stitch that it's on so it doesn't stop in the middle of a whale body. It'll finish the stitch that it's on and then it will stop and cut for me so that I have a complete stitch before it stops. And there's the tie off. And there's the cut. Pulls the threads to the back. My foot lifts up. And we are done. So I'm going to get this in the light. Is that better? It's, look at the eyeball. You can even see the eye of the whale and I think that is so cute. I don't know what's better. I just thought it was super detailed and it's, it's just a great stitch. So, there's that. Um, it does have, we didn't talk about the bobbin winder is up here once you no matter what you're doing on your screen what's on there loaded once you click that over with your bobbin on there this pulls up and you can adjust your speed and this is the play button here so you don't have to use your foot pedal it's one speed so it makes it nice and smooth and the same tension on winding the whole time okay and then it turns back off so you're not interrupting anything so I'm going to go back and I'm just going to put it at the beginning. You don't have to do this. It doesn't matter. I like it to just be fresh. <laughs> okay, so if you're not in love, you need to come down and put your hands on it. Come test drive it. We have this one out on the floor. So you can, every machine sews a little bit different. They feel different. Come try it out.